that's where you make your decision. So check it out. Are you going to reject h sub 0 or are you going to fail? This means fail to reject or are you going to fail to reject h sub 0? Let's check it out. The, if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, you reject. If it's greater than alpha, you fail to reject. What are we going to do here? Reject or fail to reject? Reject. You're going to reject. Why? The p-value is less than alpha. Reject h sub 0. So claim opposite, got it. a sub 0 sub 1, no problem. Alpha, very easy, it's given to you. Test statistic, it's the only place you do math. Right there. That's it. That's math. You get your, your test statistic. With a p-value method, this is where it changes. Traditional is going to change after this. With a p-value method, you put this on your chart, and you look up the area in the table, depending on whether you're a left tail or a right tail or a two-tail test. Not your head if you're okay with that. You need no left tail, right tail, right tail. You look up your area, that is your p-value. You compare the area in the table, your p-value, to your alpha. If it's smaller than alpha, you reject the h of zero. If it's not smaller than alpha, you have to fail to reject. Here's what this says in, in plain English. This says that this sample data is far enough away, is rare enough to prove my assumption incorrect. That's what it says. If my assumption's proved incorrect, the alternative is true. Now this, this is where this comes in when you head out of step. Which one, which one was false? What did we reject? Did we reject h sub 0 or h sub 1? h sub 0. So we rejected this. That means that this one is true. Which one was h sub 1? Was it the claim or the opposite? The claim. That's why we label it. So when you reject this, you know, oh, I accept that. Did you prove your claim right? Yes. yes, you did. You certainly did. It said you reject a sub zero. Rejecting a sub zero means h sub one is true. So reject a sub one or a sub zero. A sub one, true. Depending on where h sub one is, that means you prove your claim or your opposite. So, so we just proved our claim right here. So what this means is that if our claim is most CEOs are male. We just proved that. We just proved with statistics that most CEOs are male. It wasn't an assumption that we have right now anymore. It was based on evidence. We tested it against the claim. It turned out to be true. So here's, here's how you interpret this. If you reject your h sub 0, that means that your h sub 1 is right. If it's listed as your claim, it says you have enough evidence to support the claim that in the research claim. If you fail to reject h sub 0, you say there is not enough evidence to support the claim that. So it's either this one. If you reject h sub 0, you're going to write exactly this. If you fail to reject h sub 0, you write exactly this. So reject h sub 0, here's what I want to see on your paper. There is enough evidence to support the claim that, and then you're going to state the claim. In our case, most CEOs are men. If you don't write the interpretation, this class is useless to you. If you don't know the interpretation, it means that you can do all the work, but you still don't get it. It's just a, it's a way, it was a waste of a semester. Okay, honestly, uh, if you can't do the interpretation, because right now you need to be making decisions about this data. If you can't, if you just do this and you go, I can find a test statistic. Don't care what it means. I know I reject the hoe. That sounds pretty bad. <laughs> I know I reject the h sub zero, but 
I don't know what that means as far as the statement goes. You've got to be able to get the interpretation. That's what this class is about. That's why this class isn't hard mathematically. It's all based on your calculator. The math isn't the hard part. It's, it's, not, the, it's not the calculator. It's interpreting. This is a word problem. This is a critical thinking class. That's why there's a writing component there. There should be a writing component to it. You've got to write stuff out and understand it. So you're going to write, if you reject the h sub 0, there is enough evidence. That means you, you, you had your sample. It was rare enough to say your claim was wrong. Or to say, I'm sorry, say your, your null hypothesis is wrong. That means your alternative hypothesis is right. If the hy alternative hypothesis is stated with your claim, that means your claim is right. If not, if, if this, you couldn't prove that wrong, then you can't prove that right, then you can't prove your claim right. Which means here, if you fail to reject h sub 0, if you fail to reject it, that means there is not enough evidence to support the claim. That's the only two cases you have. It's either you're going to reject or fail to reject. If you reject, great. There's enough evidence to support your claim. If you fail to reject, there's not enough evidence to support the claim. And then you reset your claim. Okay. all there is to it. If you can grasp this concept, then, then you have hypothesis testing down. In the next two sections, 7, 4 and 7, 5, all we're going to be dealing with is means rather than proportions. But this is the idea. These are the same seven steps no matter what you do for the p-value method. Are you okay with the seven steps? How many feel pretty good about it right now? Good. That, that's great. Would you like to see the comparison to the traditional method? Okay, traditional method, steps one, steps two, step three, and step four are identical. So I'm only going to start step number five. You okay with that? Yes, no? Sure. One through four, same. So we're going to start with step number five for the traditional method. One through four will be identical in either case. You still have a test statistic. Here's where it deviates. It's only one little thing. Just it. At step number five, instead of finding the p-value, instead of putting the test statistic on your graph, what you've got to do is determine whether you're a left tail, a right tail, or a two tail test, and find the critical value. Notice how we didn't even have to find a critical value for p-value method. That's why people tend to use it, uh, is because you don't have to find that. So, with the traditional method, the way people used to do it all the time, you're going to find a critical value. The critical value is still based on your, your alpha. So you need to determine firstly left tail, right tail, two tail test again. What are we, what were we, left tail, right tail, two tail? Right tail. Right tail. So that's over here. Again, it doesn't have to be like to scale or, or anything. And instead of looking up this area, you're going to go in reverse. What you're going to do is since that's a right tail test, your alpha is in that tail. How much is your alpha? Notice that if we had a two tail test, we'd have to split up our alpha. You still okay? This is 0 0.05. So here's the big difference. You ready? With a p-value test, you look up your test statistic in the z-score section and you find an area. With the traditional method, you look at an area, and it's going to give you a critical value that's still a z value. So right now on your table, I need you to look up 0 0.05. Remember, 0 0.05 is an area, so look up 0 0.05. Mm -hmm. You should probably get something like 1.645. Actually, you get negative 1.645, don't you? <coughs> but now this is the part where you're going to be smarter than your table. You're going to look at that and you go, okay, if, point, if, I, if I'm talking about a right tail test, 
can that possibly be a negative number? No. So what value is that? Now this is not a test statistic, this is a critical value. With a traditional method, you're going to have something called a rejection region and a fail to reject region. This is the number that separates those two things for you. Which one is the rejection region, the right or the left? It's the area in the tail. That's what we're looking at. So this is the fail to reject. And this right here is the rejection region. So if it falls here, you don't reject it. If it falls there, you do reject it. So step five, we, we draw our picture. It looks identical, doesn't it? It's still a right tail test, isn't it? It still has a line there. It's just the line is a different thing that we're talking about. I, I hope you're still with me on this. The, the p-value, you put down the test statistic, you find the area. You get it? Traditional is opposite. You put down the area, you find the critical value. It's literally doing the opposite thing. That's why on your chapter six uh, stuff, I had you not only look up z-scores, hey, p-value, I had you look up areas, hey, traditional method. That's why, we have, that, that's why you had to be good at that stuff. So you're looking up a critical value here, and then what you do in step number six is you compare the test statistic to the critical value. So one method, you're comparing the areas. The other method, you're comparing the z-scores, or the, the test statistic to the critical value. There's two options. You can be in the rejection region. If you're in the rejection region, hey, you're going to reject. Or you can be in the fail to reject region. In which case you fail to reject. But in either case, you're talking about H of zero. Let's see if we can do it. What's our test statistic? Is it different than over here? Would you have a different test statistic with traditional versus p-value? Test statistic. No, you're going to calculate this exact the same way. It's still going to be 3.81. So what you're going to do now is you're going to say, okay, where, where is the 3. Point, is that right? Where is the 3.81? Is it in the fail to reject region or is it in the rejection region? It's like way over here, right? 3.81 is there. That's in the rejection region. So now you make your decision. Are you going to reject H sub 0 or fail to reject H sub 0? Why? So here's what this says, okay? This is the same idea. Please watch on the board here real quick. What the p-value method says is, this is how rare you need to be, this or smaller. Are you listening? This is how rare you need to be to prove this right or wrong. This is how rare you are. That's rare enough. Here's what this says. This is how rare you need to be to prove this right or wrong. Anything past this, you're rare enough. This says, I'm past that. That means I'm rare enough to prove right or wrong. It's the same exact idea. One's just comparing areas, one's comparing the, the critical value and test statistic which gave you those areas. That's it. So in this case, yes, you're still going to 